Tapor is a set of text analysis tools that was developed by a consortium of Canadian universities. Tapor exists online and to get to it you just go to taporware.ualberta.ca. What I'm going to do in this screencast is take you through most of the tools that Tapor offers and while I'm doing so we'll actually be analyzing a text, a, a literary text, and I'll be trying to demonstrate what text analysis can reveal about a text. When you go to the Tapor website, you'll see over on the left-hand side that you can use the tools to analyze HTML documents, XML documents, or just plain text documents. And I'm going to use the plain text tools. So the first tool we're going to look at is probably also the simplest. It's the list words tool. So we're going to click on that and that takes us to this page. Now I think the first thing that you'll notice here is that you have to supply a source text, the text that you want to analyze. And there's two ways that you can do that. You can have a local file, that is one that's actually on your computer, and you can upload it using this button or you can simply link to a text, to a plain text that exists on the web by putting the address here. Now you'll see there's already an address in the URL field there. So how did I get that? Well I'll show you. I went to Project Gutenberg and I searched for a particular text, one that I thought would be good to, to do a kind of preliminary analysis on and that text was Frankenstein, which is one of the, the thousands of texts that's available uh, via Project Gutenberg. When you select the search results for Frankenstein, you then have uh, further options. You can choose the format as HTML, EPUB, Kindle, Plucker, uh, and so on. We're going to choose the plain text version. And once we select that plain text version of Frankenstein, you'll see that the entire novel opens up in your web browser. What you then want to do is copy the address from the top field of your web browser. Then go back to Taper and paste that web address into the source text URL. Okay, we're now ready to do a basic analysis of the text, uh, the list words tool, which will simply generate a list of the words and it'll give the frequency for each one of those words. You'll see that there's a few parameters that we can set in the middle uh, box here. Words limited to, the first option is all words, so we could list the frequency of every last word in the novel from the word Frankenstein to the word the to the word of and so on. Uh, the next option, you can search for just words that match a particular pattern. Maybe you want words that just contain the sequence J-O-B for some reason. You can limit the words to ones that are listed below, ones that are not listed. You can also, the last option down there, and this is the one I'm going to keep, you can use the modified stop words list, which means that it will ignore very common words like the, of, from, uh, words like that. Okay, we're going to keep the other parameters at their defaults, and then we're going to press submit, and we get these results. So the results tell us that there are 7,253 unique words in the novel Frankenstein. And then the column below that lists those words from most frequent to least frequent. And it also, you'll see that uh, there are little tiny graphs there. Um, those are called spark lines, and those indicate the distribution, the, the rough distribution of each word, first five words, I should say, through the novel. So if we look at the most common word in the novel, we'll see that it is the word man. It appears 131 times in the text, and if you also look at the spark line, you'll see that it peaks in the middle of the novel. And I think that's kind of interesting, because that's actually the part of the novel which is given over to the story of the, of, of the monster, or the creature himself. 
Another thing to note is the second most common word is the word life. Not surprising, perhaps, given that uh, the novel Frankenstein is about the creation of, of life. The word father is third most common, and that too, I think, touches on one of the, the central themes of the novel, because Victor, uh, Victor Frankenstein, the, the scientist in the novel, is really, uh, he, he works and labors and lives under the, the, the very long shadow of his father. So it's not surprising that that is one of the top most frequent words as well. And then lastly, I might note that the word eyes, eyes and seeing form one of the, the main patterns of imagery in the novel. So again, it's, it's not surprising that the, that word appears so frequently as well. The next tool we're going to demonstrate is the concordance feature in Tapor. And again, uh, you put in the Earl of the text. We'll still we'll continue, continue to use Frankenstein through all of these examples. And then you put in a word or word pattern that you're interested in finding, of concording, if that's uh, a word. Uh, in this case, I've chosen the word eyes because it's, it's one that appears frequently in the novel, as I noted. You'll note here that there are some further parameters. So it says context, and there's a drop down menu, and you can choose either words, sentences, or paragraphs. What that simply means is that you are choosing what context you want to see the, the word in question within. So in this case, I've chosen a context of five words. Now one other thing too is that Tapor allows you to search for, or it will suggest synonyms for a word if you, if you want it to. So here I've selected uh, Get Synonyms and it is suggesting opinion, persuasion, sentiment, thought, view as potential synonyms for the word eyes. Uh, I'm not going to select any of those. Now when we press Submit, these are the, these are the results that the tool returns. There are 104 instances of the word eyes in the novel, and here we see each of those instances in context. So the first one, sympathize with me, whose eyes would reply to mine. And obviously this tool would be important and helpful if you wanted to look at something like the pattern of imagery that's evoked by the notion of eyes, or the, the word eyes, and wanted to look at all of the instances uh, quickly and just get a, a kind of overall sense of what that word, what that pattern of imagery is doing. Now the next tool we're going to look at is called co-occurrence and essentially what co-occurrence does is it allows you to find uh, two words that exist within a certain distance of one another in the text. So in this case I've chosen the word eyes, you'll see it there, primary pattern eyes, and the co-pattern being monster. You'll see too that I can choose the, the context for the co-occurrence of the words. So uh, you'll see the drop down menu there says words, lines, sentences, paragraph. So I can choose that I want the two words that I'm looking for to occur within a certain number of words from one another or a certain number of lines from one another or a certain number of sentences from one another and so on. In this case, I'm going to choose sentences as the context and the context length as one. So in other words, this is going to search individual sentences that contain both the word eyes and the word monster. When we press submit, we find that there are seven co-occurrences of those two words. I'll just read one of them. When by the dim and yellow light of the moon, as it forced its way through the window shutters, I beheld the wretch, the miserable monster whom I had created. He held up the curtain of his bed, and his eyes, if eyes they may be called, were fixed on me. Now the next tool we're going to look at is called collocation, which might sound kind of similar to co-occurrence, but here's the difference. Co-occurrence is looking for the coincidence of two words that you specify, and you get to specify how far apart those words appear. On the other hand, with collocation, you specify a single word, and then the tool tells you what other words tend to appear near that word through the text. Now as with co-occurrence, you can choose the context for the search, for the analysis, and in this case I'm going to choose a context of sentences as I did with co-occurrence, but um, 
No, actually, I will keep the context length as 1 as well. So in other words, what we are doing is we are looking for sentences that contain the word father, and then we are finding out what words tend to appear in those sentences along with the word father. Now when we click Submit, we get these results which show that sentences in the novel that contain the word father, that uh, in 26 of them, the word, the name Elizabeth, appears. The word time appears uh, in 21 of those sentences. The name Felix in 19, the word thought in 18, and so on. Now I think the co-location of Elizabeth and Felix, the names, is not necessarily that interesting. Those are, those are simply other characters in the novel. But I do think it's very interesting that when father appears in the novel, in, in, a, in a given sentence in the novel, that words like time and thought and day also frequently appear. And I think the significance of those kinds of words becomes even more apparent if we do a kind of counterpart search. Namely, we do a collocation search for the word mother. And what we find is this, that the top most frequent words that are co-located with the word mother in the novel. Uh, first of all, father uh, at eight. And to me that would tend to imply that uh, the mother does not tend to appear by herself, that when she appears the father is, uh, is also uh, referenced. Other interesting words that are associated with mother in the text, uh, words like child, girl, illness, children, uh, care, house, I won't push this much further, this particular tool, but I, I do think that co-location can, uh, can reveal some interesting things about a text. Next we're going to look at a tool called Fixed Phrase, and essentially what fi Fixed Phrase does, uh, that tool finds phrases in the text that occur uh, frequently. And not just frequently, but in conjunction with another word that you, as the, the user of the tool, can specify. So the word that I've specified here is the word could. So now when we press submit, we'll see that uh, the phrase could not appears 53 times in the text. Could have appears 11. Could never appears 3. Uh, going down a little bit, uh, fortune could appears twice. We could appears twice. The phrase, I could not, appears 32 times. And what I think is interesting about that is that, is that the novel Frankenstein, it's, it's about power. It's about various kinds of power, the power to create life, the father's power over his child, the monster's uh, physical power. But on the other hand, when you read the novel, you get a powerful sense of, of impotence that people are unable to do things. The scientist Victor Frankenstein, for example, uh, goes through most of the novel just, just unable to achieve what he wants to do or, or, or to do what he wants to do. And so I think it's, it's interesting that the phrase could not uh, appear so many times, 53 times, and as I said, the phrase I, I could not appears another 32 times. Now this fixed phrase tool also allows us to see the results uh, not just as a list but in uh, a graphical form as well. So you'll see here that the word could appears in the middle of the graph and to the right are words that uh, follow the word could with their frequency given in the digits beside them. On the left are words that precede could um, in, in sentences with their frequency given. And you'll also see that this is a dynamic graph in that if you click on one of the other words it will become the center term. The next tool I want to show you is pretty straightforward. It's simply called Date Finder and you simply choose the parameters that you're interested in. Uh, in this case I'm going to keep it at all dates and I'm going to click Submit and you'll see that it attempts to pull out all of the dates that are mentioned in the novel Frankenstein. Not entirely successfully. You'll see that the first one that it's, it's pulled out there, uh, 1500, actually refers to the address of um, the offices of uh, Project Gutenberg. 
but further down uh, it has had more success in pulling out sentences that reference time. So February, we had arrived in England at the beginning of October and it was now February under March, Walton, letter to Archangel, 28th March, to Mrs. Seville, etc. Just a few more tools within Tapor that I want to demonstrate, the first of which is pattern distribution. And essentially what pattern distribution does is it allows you to select a word or to, to designate a word and then the tool will visually depict the frequency of that word through the text. There's a few options that you can control, a few parameters uh, in the uh, the middle box there. It says subtext limited to, well your first op option is to distribute over paragraphs. So if you want the the granularity of your of your distribution to be to be specific paragraphs, you can do that. Of course paragraphs can be of, of different length. You, know, you can have a, a paragraph of a couple words or a paragraph of half a page. So that might not be your first choice. You can distribute over 10% blocks of the text or whatever percentage you want. You can change that 10% to 5% or 20%, uh, whatever you think is the best uh, level of granularity. You can also choose to distribute over chunks of a certain number of words. It defaults to 100 words, but again you can select whatever, whatever you want. Once we click Submit, and I guess I should first say that the word that I'm choosing to search for here is Victor, as in the, the name Victor, Victor Frankenstein. These are the results that we get. And I think this is interesting and uh, telling about the, the novel because you'll see that between the 40% um, mark of the novel and the 70% mark of the novel, there are no instances of the name Victor. And that makes sense because th the story of Frankenstein is really a story within a story within a story. And the central story belongs to the creature or to the monster. So it, it makes sense that he would not be referring to uh, Victor there, or if he does, he certainly doesn't refer to him as Victor, but rather as Frankenstein. Now the bar chart that the pattern distribution tool generates is really pretty simple, but there's another tool which allows a more complex or more sophisticated way of visualizing distribution as well. That tool is called Weighted Centroid, and essentially what it does is it allows you to look for specific words of your choosing and find their frequency, uh, and or the top 10 or top 20 highest frequency words in a text. And then it displays them in a circular chart that I'll show you in just a second. First though I want to refer to a couple of these parameters here you'll see that you can select the, the subtext or the, the context of the frequency distribution to be paragraphs or again you can uh, change it to a certain percentage of the text of your choosing or a certain number of words of the text again of your choosing. And down here you want the results to display as a Java applet because the tool creates a, an interactive or, or dynamic visualization. And here is that visualization. It's a circle, the circumference of which is divided into segments of 10% each of the text. And the closer a word is to that section of the circumference, the more likely it is to appear in that part of the novel. So the word man, for example, looks like it tends to appear in the middle of the novel, uh, between the 40% mark and the 70% mark of the novel. The second last tool that I want to demonstrate is one that allows you to compare two documents to one another. So you have to supply two source texts. So we would just put an URL in here and another URL to the second text here. For the second text, I'm going to use another novel by Mary Shelley called The Last Man. And for the first source text, I'm going to continue to use Frankenstein. Once you've supplied those two source texts, then you can choose what kinds of words you want to compare, as we've seen with other tools in Tapor. All words, words that match a particular pattern, words that belong to a particular list of words that you create, or words that uh, do not appear in a particular list. And that's what I'm going to keep it as, that's the default, because I want to ignore the common stop words. When we press submit, we get actually quite a few screenfuls of information. First of all, there's sort of some uh, basic data about the two texts. 
For example, we learn the number of unique words in each text. In Frankenstein, there's about 7,400 unique words, and in The Last Man, there are almost 13,000 unique words. In other words, the vocabulary of The Last Man is far more extensive than that of Frankenstein. The total number of words in each text is given, 78,000 for Frankenstein, 179,000 for The Last Man. We are told the number of words that occur only once in the text, the number of words that occur twice in each text, and down here we have highest word frequency, which means whatever word appears most frequently in Frankenstein, and it's probably a word like he or I, it appears 4,369 times. And whatever the corresponding word is for the last man, it appears 11,673 times. Not surprising given that uh, the last man is a much longer novel than Frankenstein. At the very bottom we also have average words frequency, which means that you take all of the words in each text, uh, in Frankenstein, let's start with that one, except for the stop words of course, and whatever the frequency is for each individual words, the average words frequency is the average of all of those individual words. So in Frankenstein, on average, each word appears just over ten times, whereas in The Last Man, on average, each word appears just over 14 times. The next screen full of information that the comparison tool gives us is devoted to common words, words that appear in both texts. So we can see at the very top that the word man, well, it appears in Frankenstein 132 times. It appears in The Last Man 200, 234 times, but once those are adjusted for the respective lengths of the novel, you end up with a relative ratio, and man actually is more frequent in Frankenstein than it is in The Last Man, uh, roughly 1.3 times more frequent. If we move further down this list, we see some interesting results. For example, the word forever appears 35 times in Frankenstein and only once in The Last Man, even though The Last Man is much longer. And that results in a, a relative ratio of 80 times. Forever is The word forever is 80 times more frequent in Frankenstein than in The Last Man. Why is that the case? Well, I'm not sure, but I think it's something that could warrant uh, further analysis by looking more closely at the text. And just one more example, the word accordingly appears roughly 25 times more frequently in Frankenstein than it does in The Last Man. And here I will speculate, Victor Frankenstein, the scientist, is a very rational, logical fellow, and he's the kind of person who thinks very much in terms of cause and effect and hence I think that's why there's a preponderance of words like accordingly in that novel, in Frankenstein. The tool will also tell us which words appear only in Frankenstein and also which words appear only in The Last Man. Tapor also has a number of beta tools which means that they are tools that are still in development and maybe all the kinks have not yet been worked out of them, the only one that I think is uh, particularly interesting is the one called List Word Pairs. And as the name of the tool suggests, what it does is it searches the text for pairs of words that appear more than once. So for example, the word pair, my father, appears 90 times in Frankenstein. Project Gutenberg appears 86. That's only because uh, I didn't uh, remove that uh, header information from the text before using it as, as a source text. The phrase I felt appears 50 times, and so on. So, in summation, there are lots of tools within the Tapor suite, and to my mind, uh, Tapor is one of the top three tools that are available for doing this kind of text analysis of long or longish texts, things like novels or long speeches, historical documents, collections of blog postings, things like that. The other two programs that I think are worth looking at as well, one is called Juxta and one is called Katma. And like Tapor, they are free to use. 
If this screencast has prompted any questions or suggestions or comments, feel free to email me at mmorton at uwaterloo.ca.